What's going on guys, Chu here, bringing you another review on the book of Boba Fett, the episode 2, the, this episode really made episode 1 just kind of blend in and just make it much better, I know that a lot of people were criticizing episode 1, but episode 2 just brings it to a whole new level, 52 minutes of awesome action with Boba, and just going into really heavy stuff. But let's get into it, guys. But before I continue, guys, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. It would mean the world to me if you guys would join up with this family, this little family that we have here on this channel. It would mean the world to me. And it's free, so that would be much appreciated. But let's get to it. So, we have... <clears throat> Boba, excuse me, going and bringing in the prisoner that they collected, uh, trying to get information out of him. They sent him to the uh, Sarlacc pit, which was empty, which was funny. I, I, thought, I thought that was really funny. But then bringing him to the mayor, well, as, after he confesses, uh, obviously the mayor doesn't probably take too kindly of this. They, then we see the, I guess, the character that David Paskesi plays and actually you know, tries to intervene, but it's like, nope, I'm gonna go. And this prisoner gets killed. He apparently is from the Night Wind, which I'm not very familiar with. But we see that the mayor says, I have no intention to go up against you. I even offers him money. And we see that he he's like, gives him a warning saying, this is my tribute to you. Go and find out more from the Paradise Place. And we actually go there find out that things aren't as they seem and we actually have some huts arriving we see that the hut influence in tatooine is still much very much strong and we actually see how these two you know twins arrive who want to take claim to java's place and just everything that he possessed boba's like nope this belongs to me. I took down Bib Fortuna after the death of Jabba. So therefore, it belongs to me. And we actually kind of see this interesting Wookiee hunter. Like, like I feel like this is going to be something we're going to see later on. I'm not very familiar with the lore or, you know, all of that other information, you know, from the expanded universes. I'm not very familiar with, but I'm definitely liking this character. I'm really looking forward to the fight that he's going to have with Boba later on because you could just tell it's going to happen. But then we see Boba and uh, Fennec knowing that this is going to be probably going to be the main struggle, power struggle that we're going to be seeing throughout this the remainder of this series. So this should be very interesting. But after like a good 15 minutes, we then go back into Boba's past. We see him going back to the back to tank. He's still recovering. I mean, I'm imagining this guy really has gone through a lot still, and he needs as much recovery as possible. But we see him going back and seeing memories of him again with the Tuscans. And I gotta say, with these Tuscan Raiders, we're starting to see more of their, I guess you could say, humanitarian side. Like, they're very, uh, obviously, they're very rough around the edges. They're very... Uh, brute like and whatnot but they still admire and i guess you could say respect people with boba we started seeing them giving them training starting to take them in later on in the episode we see them actually f fully taking him in and making him like one of their own but we see how with boba he realizes that there's a threat and that is the people within this train who start shooting down the members of the Tuscan uh, tribe, and therefore he takes it upon himself, takes out a crew of them, a, a crew of people that were, I guess you can say, just mugs or thugs. Takes them out, takes their bikers, their bikes, gives it to them, trains them, just like he kind of has been trained by them. He kind of returns the favor in training him how to use this. They basically have this spice heist without even knowing about it. And I gotta say that that scene, all this action that we saw in this episode was fantastic. Boba is more than more than we even realized. Like this dude is super badass. And him having to take action within his own hands really just shows you that this guy is more than just a suit. And you know after they successfully take them take these the train down we realize that the pikes are also involved so could we see crimson dawn 
a very, very strong possibility. That's honestly something that I would love to see Crimson Dawn still, in, still being around now that we know that Maul and Dryden Voss are long dead at this point. So really, I'm excited to see what has happened with all these syndicates later on. And later we see how the Tuscan, or as speci specifically the leader, kind of gives him the gift where it's a lizard that kind of guides him and finding a branch. He successfully finds it. We see him having memories even further from when he was younger and thinking about his father Django, which is very, very important. We know that even though Boba was a clone of Django, he truly loved his father and he saw him as that, not as a clone. But he does successfully find this branch. They take him in. He gets his wardrobe. He gets this gaffy stick. And honestly, this man is badass. They even have like this little fire for him. This little, I guess you could say a little ceremony for him. And it's just, it was beautiful. Truthfully, it was a very beautiful episode. I really loved it. And I cannot wait for the remainder of this season. I'm hoping that people will start loving it and stop hating it. But guys, that is it for me. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you guys have, leave a like, comment below your thoughts. As always, stay safe, and I'll catch you later.